hello hello facebook family how are you i'm going to share this to my amazing group so if you're watching from the group or you're watching on my main page welcome 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 my name is dr shala Ezokoli. i am a physician coach and i help um, busy physicians defeat and prevent burnout as well as create uh, options for themselves outside of traditional medicine options which include fun autonomy freedom and multiple streams of income um, i do this through life career and business coaching uh, for physicians i'm very excited about my new program we're starting next week it's launching now it, this is a group a group uh, program and i uh, structured this in a group uh, program so that we can bounce off of each other, share our wins, etc. But tonight I'm going to be talking about self love, shade, and haterade. Now, when I sent this out to my email, uh, my email list, and I put it up, I think yesterday, I was going to talk about um, why self love can be difficult for moms. But you know, a bit of messiness happened in my inbox last night, and I realized that. Um, walking the walk of self-love was what kind of got me through that situation and i will um obviously not mention any names or anything like that but it was just it's really is an example of how self-love can help you get through things where otherwise you would collapse your confidence and go running for the hills now my first point has to do with i'm going to talk about three points one is um and why self-love can be difficult for moms one we internal internalization of external situations two feeling guilty about putting ourselves first because of our other identities that we've taken on and three not realizing that self-love is a practice that doesn't just doesn't doesn't just happen so the first thing i'm going to talk about is the messiness that went down in my inbox last night over this over this course that i'm launching um you know uh, an individual was uh mad at me because i because of this course that i'm launching for physician moms and um for some reason i just it just made me think back to um times when I've, I've seen people who would have maybe on the verge of creating a product or something great is about to happen and then some critic just throws out some careless words or something like that and boom they shut down and they never do it again you know fine i've been doing this for years so this is not my first rodeo of launching something or having a product that people um disparage or whatever but the truth is that if you ever get canceled or if you ever get criticized or if you ever bump up against some kind of unfair criticism, it's self-love that will see you through because you have to love yourself more than other people hate you. So here I am, you know, obviously there's all, there's always this inner critic, right? And the inner critic is about to bubble up. And I was like, no, no, there's, there's nothing wrong with me. I'm fine. I'm going to go ahead and launch my program and keep going with it. And you know, we're gonna we're gonna launch a program. I'm gonna teach the the, the course, um, the group coaching course, and we're gonna have an amazing time. So that's why I titled it "Self Love Shade and Haterade." So when people come for you, throwing shade and haterade all up in your face, remember this: you don't have to internalize external situations. How often does this happen? Where we blame ourselves for things that are external to us or that have nothing to do with us? For instance. Oh, I launched this program. This person doesn't like it. There must be something wrong with me. There must be something wrong with the program. Or, oh, at work, you know, um, I, I spoke up for a patient. These people don't like it. There must be something wrong with me. Or, you know, well, I'm working from home and I did four lo loads of laundry. I did two loads of laundry instead of four. There must be something wrong with me. We are very quick to internalize external things that should not be internalized and should not be taken personally. And self-love helps you do that. Like I said, you have to love yourself more than other people hate you. And here's the truth. Let me just give it to you straight. The world has taught women to hate ourselves, period. Think about it. When people want to throw out like abusive words, there's it's either a woman's private parts that they're talking about. So what's so bad about somebody's privates, right? And it's a woman's, <laughs> you know? The ultimate abuse, the ultimate insult to call a man is the word bitch, right? Why? Because it's pertaining to something womanish. When you hear phrases like, you throw like a girl, you jump like a girl, you fight like a girl. 
the world has taught us to hate ourselves. And that is why a course on self-love is <laughs> pertinent. It's like, yeah, what do I need self-love for? Blah, blah, blah. You know, I'm going to post the links to the page and you can see for yourself. Self-love helps you develop confidence. Self-love helps you be able to step up in your world. You know, self-love helps you take time for the things that mean something to you. A lot of times, people say, I don't have time to do this. I don't have time to do that. No, it's not that you don't have enough time. You don't have enough self-love. And that's okay. But I wasn't going to stop at telling people, you know, well, you just have to love yourself. You just have to love yourself without explaining to them the how. And that is what this course aims, this group coaching course in this group uh, feel attempts to do, to teach you how to love yourself. Because the only, the, you, 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 the way you, no one can love you the way you can love you. And as you start to love yourself and pay attention to your needs, your wants, and the kind of person you are, and get to know yourself better without shame or judgment, you are able better to, to keep the external things external and internalize the things you choose to. That way people don't, um, you know, the minute somebody says something to you, you don't go running for the hills or go collapsing. What's it going to be? Self-love is important. When you internalize external situations, another issue I found is people like, oh, my house is untidy, therefore it means something about me. Actually, it doesn't. If you live in a house, it's going to get untidy from time to time. That's just the way it is. And you get to get up and tidy it. Oh, my desk is so is not organized. This means X about me. No, it just means you use the desk. It doesn't mean, so as women, we need to stop taking things in that on the surface mean nothing. Now, I'm not saying don't improve yourself, but the truth is that you can't improve a self you don't love. You can't improve a self you don't know. If you don't know, you know, there's this saying that to know me is to love me. Do you know yourself? A lot of us are even uncomfortable looking at ourselves in the mirror, our true selves, and seeing ourselves for who we are. And until you're able to do that without judgment, self-love will always be lacking. There's always going to be, well, you know, I want to write a book, but I don't have time. You have time because the people that write books have 24 hours. You have time. Maybe you're wobbly in the self-love area. So your priorities are not, uh, I was going to say your priorities are not prioritized, but your priorities don't, are not moved to the top of the list. So in some cases where you think you don't have time, you just don't, you just haven't prioritized yourself. And a lack of prioritizing oneself can come from a place of self-hate or at least a place of not enough self-love. So that's my first point. You know, we need to stop internalizing external situations and um, we need to develop self-love. And that is what module one um, teaches us a self-love practice. And I'm going to be putting, excuse me, a, a link in the comments. Now, number two, this is a big one. We feel guilty about putting ourselves first because our other identities come before our self-identity. Think about it, doctor, mom. When I ask people, I do some, some, um, uh, some client interviews I do, I will start with, um, especially if it's one of those where a client is sent to me as a client before I've had a chance to meet the client, I ask them who is, so I'll say, who is Shola, for example. The first thing people tell me is their job and how many children they have or whose wife they are or whatever. I want to hear, I am so-so and so, I am kind, I'm empathetic, I like to eat uh, I don't know, spaghetti, I, um, I'm funny, I have a quick temper. Those are the things I want to hear from the client. But almost, I'm going to say 100% of people start with their job. And these are women. They start with their job. Who is, and I always start, I say who is, and then I'll look at, I'll mention their name. So let, let's say the client's name is Sharon. I'll say who is Sharon. And people start with their job. So what happens in this case is that all these identities come before our self-identity. And self-love helps you bring your own self-identity to the fore. That way, when you're doing things for that self, that Sharon, that Shola, that's not the, the, the one that's owned by other people, not the one that's quote-unquote quote owned by a husband, a corporation, or a bunch of kids, 
Yeah, I'm a mom too. I got a bunch of kids. Well, I'm calling them a bunch, like two of them. <laughs> that self, who is that self? Now, when you get to know that self and you are able to have an identity of that self, then you don't feel guilty about prioritizing the needs of that person. That person that's been buried so long. That person that's been buried under multiple identities. Mom, doctor, daughter, sister, aunt, uh, chef, cook. Uh, 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 uh. Who are you? Who are you without the labels? Who are you without the, the trimmings? Who are you? If you're a doctor, you're watching this. When you're not doctor, whatever, who are you? When you get to know that person outside of all the other labels, then you will start to be able to love and prioritize that person for who she is. So maybe Dr. Shala likes to, I don't know, likes to teach patients about their diabetes or whatever. But Shala, that's just me, likes to read John Grisham novels. So you see, when you take on these, ident these different identities, your original real identity, and these identities, it, it doesn't mean they should uh, be gone or anything like that, but your original identity, which is you, right? That is the person that we want to focus on in this course. That's the person that you're going to bring out of hiding and start to show her love again. That's the person that we're going to be coaxing out of hiding to live powerfully as her full self. Not somebody's mom, not somebody's wife, not somebody's doctor. And yes, it's, it's a course for physician moms, but, um, you know, we're not going to be talking, believe me, we're not going to be talking about children. It's not a mommy blog. <laughs> there are many mommy blogs for that. So when you feel guilty, of it, one of the reasons we feel guilty is because we're, we're, we're not there. We're not in our own life. How about we start to center ourselves in our own life? And my course teaches you how to do that. One of the taglines is banish mom guilt. Mom guilt. Oh my goodness. Can we just leave that phrase in 2020 already? Mom guilt. What is that? Like that, that shouldn't be a phrase. It shouldn't be a thing. Mom guilt. Like it's a, a thing. Oh, mom guilt. You don't hear people talk about dad guilt. No. Mom guilt. Why? Because... You know, it's like guilt, being a mom is associated with, with feeling guilty all the time about not doing enough. But let me tell you something. Because perfection is not required, guilt is unnecessary. So you don't have to feel guilty about what you're doing or not doing. You just have to realize that, oh yeah, I'm, you know, I'm going somewhere. It's like this. Let's say you start out on a journey to, uh, I don't know, let's say you want to go to California and you start driving right? So let's say you go from New York to California and you start driving. And the, the, the drive is like 24 hours. I think it's 24 hours. I'm not sure. Don't quote me. So let's just say the drive is 24 hours. Do you feel bad because at hour 16, you're just in, I don't know, Topeka, Kansas? No, because you're going to California. You're going somewhere, but you're not going to feel bad. Like, oh my God, I feel so bad. I'm just in Kansas. You're going somewhere. Life is a journey. But if we expect to be perfect all the time, we'll feel guilty all the time because you will never be enough for perfection, but you can always be enough for excellence and you can always be enough for progress and you can always be enough for the journey. So when we start to find ourselves feeling guilty, we have to realize that we've probably painted our original identity over with all these other different identities and that original identity is crying out for help, but we're like, shut up. You, we don't have time for you. So like, well, I want to write a book, but I don't have time. You don't have time because you, all these identities, you've given them more importance above your original identity. Okay. So number three, last but not the least, one of the reasons why self-love is uh, difficult for moms in love. What, what did I title this, <laughs> this life? Self-love, shade and haterade. Self-love is a practice. It does, just doesn't happen. 
Why? Because like I said from in the beginning, the world has taught us to hate ourselves. It's just, just, just the way it is, right? Um, we can argue the finer points from now till next year, but if the world has taught us to hate ourselves and we're all walking around with some measure of internalized misogyny, yes, I said that, internalized misogyny or internalized misogynoir, we have to make a practice of self-love and self-love doesn't happen. And I remember it's like, it would tell me, oh, just love yourself, just love yourself, just love yourself. And I, re I start to realize that, well, you know what? You have to tell people how to love themselves because they're not going to look around in the world and get it because it's not there. Now, if you have, if you can say that your self-love is not where you want it to be. This course is for you because it's going to radically change your thinking about self-love. And I'm very, I'm a very action line strategic person. So if I tell you, love yourself, believe me, there's a how to, I figured out the how to, because I'm a living, breathing, walking, talking model of self-love. And, and that's the thing. Love is not a pie. If we say self-love, a lot of times people think, oh, you're just being selfish. I'm not selfish at all. I just love myself. <laughs> and love is not a pie. If you love yourself, it doesn't mean you can't love other people. Love is not a pie. So why leave yourself out of the equation, love on everybody else, and you see yourself as not important? Self-love is a practice in a world that... Um, has taught us to hate ourselves. And it's a constant practice. It's not, oh, you know, I'm just, I'm just going to take a spa day. Or sometimes people, people are fed up and do things out of resentment. No, don't do a spa day out of resentment. Do it from a place of prioritizing yourself. You know what? I need rest and I need relaxation. It doesn't have to be a spa day. I haven't been on a spa day in a long time. It's not about a spa day or about doing these uh, one-off gestures to treat yourself when that should be the way you are living. Yes, you should treat yourself, no doubt. But you should live it, you should live from a place of self-love every single day. Can you imagine if um you told your kids or your spouse or whoever, you know, I just love you sometimes. Like I love you once a month. But some of us, that's what we're doing to ourselves. We're like, well, you know, I love you once a month, but the rest of the time I hate you. Go into your corner and sit down and shut up. A lot of us, that's how we treat ourselves. And then when we don't meet up to this mark that we set ourselves, usually it's an unrealistic standard. When we don't meet up to uh, the mark, what do we do? We beat ourselves up. We tell ourselves we're not good enough. We internalize external things that may or may not even be our fault. So this is one. These are some of the things I'm going to be digging deep in the um, in the course with. Um, talking about self-love, how to do it, defeating mom guilt. That's module two. Then we're going to be going into um, doing a deep dive into imposter syndrome and how, you know, you, you feel you're not good enough as a parent. Why? Let's pick that apart and figure out what, you know, how to deal with it, how to create peace of mind for yourself all the time all the time peace of mind peace of mind all the time not just when things are going great because if you're a human being on earth you will know that things don't go great all the time but how do you maintain your peace of mind and your self-love in all of that we're going to be digging deep in this course it's a five-week course you know five weeks we're done and then you know obviously um if you're watching this and you're not a physician mom or you don't want to do the course you can sign up for private coaching i work with people one-on-one -on -one. actually this this is what i do for the most part this is just a new program that um i decided to structure a little bit differently um so that we could have that group group feel and the group effect and also to see if it works if it works great if it doesn't yeah moving on but um join my course and if it doesn't apply to you you can always work with me one-on-one -on -one. you can send me a dm you can always you know um this is one of the times where it's okay for you to jump in my dms so why is self-love difficult for moms or self-love shade and haterade one we internalize external situations and things we shouldn't in internalize okay somebody comes at you with something you immediately take it in 
Because you don't have enough self-love as a shield to ward it off. We feel guilty about putting ourselves first because our identity is all messed up. Your identity starts from me. This is me as a person. And then the other pieces are add-ons. What we've done is like we've made the other pieces the identity and our little, our actual self is the add-on. That's messed up. Number three, realize, not realizing that self-love is a practice and self-love doesn't actually happen. There's some people that they say, oh, I love myself, I love myself, but they act, they, they are completely out of integrity with that statement because they act in ways that shows that literally pouring with self-hate. So what's it going to be? You know, join up if you're a physician mom. If you're not, sign up to coach with me as a one-on-one -on -one client. And um, we start next week. So again, I'm going to put all the details in the, in the comments. But we start next week, Tuesday. You know, we're, you know we're, we're going, we're starting. But tomorrow, I will be here talking about... Uh, I think I'm talking about perfectionism tomorrow. I have all these topics lined up. Let me see. Yeah. Anyway, tomorrow I will be back talking about um, self-love and the doctor mom part two. And I'll be delving into um, guilt. It's either guilt or perfectionism, one of the two. I usually have notes. But anyway, ladies, gentlemen, whoever is watching. And if again, if you're not a doctor mom, you can share it with, uh, with your... If you know anyone who is or know anyone who's interested, you can share it with them. So have a wonderful, wonderful evening. And I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.